We've heard plenty about how artificial intelligence is reshaping the workplace. But what could AI bring to the future of warfare? With David Martin, we look to the skies. When you look at it from this angle, it's a, it's a pretty sleek aircraft. Think of what goes on in this hangar at Eglin Air Force Base in Florida as Top Gun AI. This is one of our uh, main test vehicles. Major Trent McMullen is a fighter pilot learning to fly alongside the XQ-58, a drone piloted by artificial intelligence and a test bed for a new kind of Air Force. Have you flown with that? I have. I've flown safety chase on it for several missions, messaging back and forth with the autonomy on board. How well does it maneuver? It takes a little bit of getting used to flying next to it. As humans, we fly very smooth, but it can roll and, uh, and fly a little bit snappier than maybe a human pilot would. Sounds like a rougher ride. It could be a little bit rougher a ride, but there's no human on board. Artificial intelligence is on board, and now it's learning how to fight. So what are some of the tasks that you could assign that aircraft? Hey, there's an adversary out there. Perform an intercept on that adversary. So we've been able to give it some of the basic blocking and tackling of air combat. Uh, that we as human pilots also train uh, on when we're first learning how to fly. The XQ-58 blasts off like a rocket, but a full-scale model took off from a runway for the first time in August. Could you put weapons on it? Absolutely. General Adrian Spain, head of Air Combat Command, is drawing up plans for operating AI-piloted drones alongside manned aircraft. You told them to go out in front and to execute an attack on a complex set of targets, uh, and they will do that. Are AI drones capable of doing what you just described today? Absolutely, we can. Uh, it is possible today. An AI-piloted F-16 has already held its own in a limited dogfight against an experienced fighter pilot. At Top Gun AI. Other F-16s are being rewired for more realistic combat. Still got a uh, cockpit. Does it still have a pilot? It does. They can engage the autonomy on and then remain as a safety pilot. So once the AI goes on, the hands come off? Yep, they'll, they'll, they'll be monitoring the system and ready to take over at a moment's notice. But we'll also have real live aircraft out there for it to fight against. Those jets will be piloted by real uh, fighter pilots trying their best to uh, outsmart the AI. How does the AI get in the plane? Yeah, is it all right if I use your notebook? Yeah. Uh, so the pilot's actually gonna hand carry something like a cartridge about this size out to the aircraft. And then we're gonna have a receptacle for them to put that in. So it's plug and play. It's that simple. Are we witnessing a revolution? If we continue down this path, it has the potential to be a revolution. Retired Air Force oh, Lieutenant sir. General Clint oh. Hindoat says it's a revolution born of necessity. The Air Force was so good for so long that it didn't need to change. Now it needs to change, and it's trying to figure out how. Change because the Chinese Air Force, which recently showcased its newest jet fighters and its own AI drone, could be more than a match for the U.S. Air Force. If we have to fight China, we're likely doing it in their front yard. And that means they can bring many, many more things to bear than we can because it's just so far away. You're having to achieve kill ratios of 10 to 1, 15 to 1, 20 to 1 to even stay in the game. So how do these war games come out when uh, American pilots are going up against 20 to 1 odds? The war games don't turn out very well. We lose. We lose. The Air Force is counting on AI drones to even the odds. What does AI bring to an aircraft that a human pilot doesn't? The big thing with uh, artificial intelligence is its ability to handle large amounts of data. A human out in a complex air combat environment, there's just no way to absorb all of it. Artificial intelligence might be able to take all of the data information and then process that uh, very quickly and then make real-time decisions. AI drones will be about half the length of a manned jet fighter and one quarter the cost. 20 to $30 million each. You could buy more airplanes, put them in the field, and still not break the bank. The key would be is that you don't have to bring that human operator home. You actually can take more risk. How many of these are you planning to field? 
Uh, we expect to have uh, uh, up to 1,000 uh, aircraft eventually and uh, uh, 150 by the end of the decade. These drones aren't just going to sit in a hangar waiting for war with, with China. What are they going to do in peacetime? It's pretty wide open. Could you send up AI drones to intercept those Russian bombers that come down off the coast of Alaska? Could you? Yes, you could do that. Those intercepts can turn nasty in an instant. Last year, a Russian fighter rocked an American F-16, so AI drones would have to be prepared to shoot. Is AI going to be making life or death decisions? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, the human who's controlling the AI will make the life and death decisions. At least for now. Increasingly, militaries around the world, including the United States military, are going to be pressured to give the machines more leeway in making those life or death decisions. Are we talking about <clears throat> giving them uh, the capability to fire on their own? The United States military is investing in the experimentation that you would need to be able to produce the types of platforms that could fire on their own if you gave them that option. And if the other side, let's say I make the decisions, what happens? Uh, I think they do so at their own peril because the AI can be fooled, the AI can be overwhelmed, it can give you false outcomes. We've seen that AI can hallucinate. Uh, so it's not a guarantee of success. What it, it guarantees is that it will do something quickly. Don't you at least have to give your pilots that option? To go full autonomy yeah. and, and just let it go? Yeah. I, I don't think America is comfortable with that yet. Um, I'm not saying that couldn't be a, a future world that we live in where we trust it, but I don't think we're there right now, certainly, and certainly not to start. We have to build that trust over time. At Top Gun AI, pilots keep putting in the reps, test flight after test flight, simulation after simulation, to build that trust. Would you rather go into combat with a human wingman or an AI wingman? When we're talking about uh, the, the threats of tomorrow, if I can send an uncrewed asset into a high-risk environment, I'd rather do that than send a human pilot.